I'm wondering, um, no mention has been made of modelling or addressing social and cultural issues. Um, I'm wondering how exactly you think we should be doing that. In the Taupo catchment, for example, we've lost about um, 20 to 25 per cent of the family farms. Um, how, as an example, how can you overcome that? Communities are going to lose a lot by putting it into forestry. I, I can have a just. I mean, that, that was one of my points that I was trying to make is that I don't think New Zealand, uh, for, for Taupo, which is a pretty special piece of water, they may have had that debate. But across New Zealand, I don't know that we have had the debate about the social cost of of our aspirations in terms of clean water. Now, that's not to say we shouldn't have those aspirations, but I think we need to have it and understand what that social cost is and how we can adjust. Uh, society never s stays the same, and and uh, um, I mean that's one of the. That's one of the costs of change, but I, but I don't think we've had that debate yet, and I think we need to have it. On the technical side, um, I think you're right, Jocelyn. It's uh, we don't do a very good job of modelling the wider impacts of, of our policies in terms of social. And it's a question that we, as economists, quite often get asked. And um, the economists that you've got, these got in this room, are not the right kinds of economists to deal with those questions. And nor do I really want to, to be perfectly honest. Um, it, involves uh, a, a lot of understanding sort of what are the knock-on effects. But what I will say is that um, it's all well and good to say that, well, what are the impacts of, of putting a cap on and moving to forestry and what would the social implications be? But on the flip side, you know, what are the social implications of having a lake that's dead and that nobody really wants to come to as well? So you've got to look at both sides of that equation um, when you start to think very sort of question for us. Uh, George Jones was the name. Uh, about a year ago, I bought nearly 300 copies of a book, uh, A World on the Edge, uh, Lester Brown from America, and distributed them to MPs around the country, uh, top industries, top science, and so on, uh, uh, councils, uh, regional councils. Um, I suspect that the only person in this room that's read it is Russell Norman, I suspect that the Member of Parliament this morning had not yet read it. Uh, uh, it is a broad look at the whole of the world. And one aspect of that, for example, is that the, uh, the 7 billion or so uh, people in the world, uh, also there's about a billion uh, cattle uh, of, of their uh, carbon footprint is much bigger than the carbon footprint of the whole human race. Uh, so my suspicion is that uh, we've got to think uh, longer term, like um, uh, a forester looks at 100 years, a farmer looks at 50, a politician lives at three, uh, um, a householder looks at one week. Um, the uh, Putting a fence into a farm that'll last 50 years may be that there are no cattle in 50 years to fence. Uh, just because we're going to go to a more uh, different way of, of eating. Um, now, I'd like some concept of the sort of standing well back from it, from comments from the uh, floor, from the group. Um, just, just briefly, I mean, I, it, one way to look at it um, is that if a price of carbon is incorporated into food prices, then there will be differential food prices. Uh, and so the kinds of food that people eat in 20 or 30 years might be quite different um, to, or to some degree different to what it is now because of differential prices if you incorporate carbon prices into food production. And I think that is an uncomfortable thing for New Zealand, obviously, um, because of the situation we're in currently in terms of dairy. Um, but that's just the reality is that over time carbon prices will be incorporated into all sorts of things, including food prices, and that will change them. Assuming that carbon pricing is the kind of <coughs> key mechanism to get the, to the low carbon future, uh, which of course is a big assumption. Uh, 
Kia ora koutou. Kia ora te rangatira, te Green Party. Um, my name is Gloria Koya. I'm a, I'm a farm trustee, uh, several farms back in the South Waitapu area. And we have dealings uh, with Rotorua, so we're very supportive of what's happening there. Also, I'm Roko Iwi, so I'm very much part of the Waitapu River uh, development planning there for the water rights and etc. And then I'm also a private landowner as well, as well as being employed by a energy efficiency company. So um, from the company I've actually learned quite a lot about looking at alternative methods, and especially in farming, because I have to admit 15 years ago I had no time for farmers. Uh, because we lived and saw the destruction at that time. But times have changed. And I have to say, in the time I've been involved in the farming sector, because I'm a bit like you, I was getting a bit negative too and thinking that, oh gosh, this is all against farming. There's actually some real good farmers out there um, working hard to develop and find solutions. I would like to think that our trust is one of them. I go back to what the lady has said down there about the um, communication sector. Uh, I'd like to hope that this group supports and pushes that that be carried out, that there's a, um, a process to develop information or some program to the community. Uh, even though we're in a small community ourselves and very much so farming from being once upon a time number one forestry, um, they're still in small communities that are very negative against farmers. So th education has to be the number one tool if you're to implement what you want, because I can, I can actually see the direction of what's going to happen. You're putting, the, you're putting the, the, the benchmark there and it, it will go ahead, but it has to make sure that it meets the needs of the community and industrial sector because in the company we see all sorts of things going on in there who would be very anti against the farming and forestry sector because they have no understanding of what it's like to be a farmer or to be in the forestry. So I'd like to um, actually ask this group that it is important <coughs> that you support a process, uh, education or training process to the communities out there, right through Aotearoa, not just to certain sectors, 